Today is very exciting as I'm going to go from this unfinished shower to completely tiling the walls, curb and grouting it. I guess you'll have to stick around till the end to see the final result but it will be totally worth the wait as I'm sure you'll learn a few things along the way. I'm going to use those 12 by 24 inches launch tiles and the first step is to set a laser so that I can actually get a perfectly level line and by measuring it at several locations I can find out where is the tallest point in relationship to my shower flow. And that the reasoning behind that is that I want to be able to place a line, which then I'm going to be able to install a little ledger, and that's where I'm going to start tiling. Obviously, you have to keep in mind that you know you'll have the grout line, so make sure to add that eighth of an inch to actually place that line. Um, the reasoning for like starting with a ledger is that that allows me to have a perfectly a level surface to st start going up with my tiles. If you were trying to like tile from the bottom of the shower fall, because it's not level, it would probably be very difficult. You really want to go back and install those after the fact. Once the ledger is in place all around the shower, then it's just a matter of making sure I install the correct protection because the flooring is done. So I don't want to, you know, dump a bunch of uh, synthet on it. And then that's a quick look of all the equipment that I plan on using to install the tiles on the walls. So I got this special larger format tile uh, thinset. I don't, I have no idea how different it is from like a regular synthet. I don't know if it's just marketing, but anyway, I got this kind because of the size of my tiles. Then it's just a matter of like following the instruction as far as how much synthet to how much water do you need. Uh, you'll see they also have a very particular way of mixing where you you mix it for a few minutes and then you'll kind of like let it rest and then mix again. I mean, it's pretty straightforward if you just read the back of the um, of the bag. So the size of your trowel will actually depend on the size of your tiles. In my case, for large uh, format tiles, I'm using a half inch trowel. So first you apply the synthet with the flat part of the trowel and then you use the indentated part to really kind of create that bed of synthet. I also decided to uh, back butter the tile. So that's just, um, you know, that just means that you put a little bit of synthet uh, behind the tile and then, you know, applied it into the bed of synthet and usually you kind of press it in and then you move it, I don't know, like half an inch to the side so that you make sure that it's really nicely embedded in it. And then, I don't know if you caught that, but I also put a little piece of, uh, you know, the system I'm going to be using to both have the spacing respected between my tile for, you know, the grout spacing, but also uh, it's going to allow me to um, install this, like, I don't know, wedge thing and uh, pry it so that the tiles will be, uh, you know, will be level. I mean, if I manage to actually <laughs> figure it out. Uh, maybe I should have, no, it goes the other way. What? I swear I tried it and it worked. I tried it the other day. Why is this not working the same way? There we go, like this. And so that makes sure that this is completely flat Okay, so what's that? Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, yeah, that's it. 10 and 7 8. Okay, let's hope this works. Is it gonna work? Oh! Are you serious? Are you freaking serious? All right, gotta keep going. So, geez. So because of the size of my tiles, I decided that maybe trying a bigger tile snapper would be part of the solution. I'm gonna score it multiple times. Well, look at that. <laughs> I'll take it. Look at this, I didn't even have to press it, it just snapped it. All right, I'm glad I got that big one. Tiling is the worst. I mean, it's just, it's just the worst, man. J'espère que deux, ça devrait suffire. What's the middle of this? Level. 
So I didn't film what I just tried to do, but I don't know what the hell's going on. I cannot seem to be getting those cuts to work. I'm at 50% <laughs> failure rate. And I mean, I might be able to reuse that, but it's really, it's really not working the way it should. I think that's what I'm gonna do. You just score it until it snaps. And that seems to be a better option, so. After that, it's pretty much a rinse and repeat process. I mean, you can maybe understand why I got a 12 by 24 inch tile is because, well, I have to use less of them. Uh, I also decided to stagger them. That's just a personal preference. Um, you know, cutting them was always difficult. So maybe I should have tried and use a wet saw, but I also know that those can be very messy. Then it was time to transition to the side wall. So I measured here and tried to get an idea of what does the synset plus the tile look like from a thickness perspective, because that's why I'm trying to find out. So that's gonna be the edge of my curb and I wanna align my bull nose with it. I mean, so if you don't have one yet, I mean, you really highly recommend to get some sort of like 360 degrees laser. I mean, here it's the perfect example why, you know, getting a perfectly uh, vertical line is super helpful. And you can see what that bull nose look like and where it's gonna be placed. So I did this exact process on both sides of the shower that really defined really the outer edge of my tiling. This side wall was uh, fairly straightforward and obviously it goes even faster because, you know, I don't have that much area to cover. Um, I really like the leveling and spacer system because you can see like for the bullnose it really helped me with you know holding the bullnose in place so that it really stays exactly where it needs to be. The last wall is uh, fairly similar to the exception that now we have to kind of do some holes uh, you know around the, uh, the shower valve and the shower head. So definitely 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 take all the time in the world to get all your measurements correct take everything into account, the grout spacing, the age to the wall, because, you know, you got one chance. Uh, you know, when you cut this thing, you really want it to fit as nicely as possible. Um, and so originally, I think I tried and used the, the Dremel, but that didn't really work well. So I quickly transitioned into my grinder using a diamond blade. So I would definitely recommend that you really take your time. I mean, you can also see me. What I used to do is like, I would fill up the groove back with water and I mean, it really would actually like boil it like right away. That's how hot this thing is getting. So, you know, take your time. I feel like if you don't and it overheats, you're probably at risk of just like, you know, breaking the tile again. Uh, and then to finish it up, I actually went back and used the Dremel because that really what allowed me to get the corner completely detached from the back side of the tile. And then I kid you not, that was the first try and it actually fit just perfectly. Everything went uh, pretty straightforward from there on uh, until I got to the point of uh, making the shower head spout. Uh, holes because yeah, that was a lot more difficult than I thought. So you see I had this existing diamond head uh, hall saw. I used it in the past. Um, I knew it was kind of used, but I was like, you know what? I mean, I just need to make one hole. How difficult is that gonna be? And then obviously, I mean, I was really struggling to even like start to score the tile itself. And then I, I could really tell, I mean, it was trying to rip all over the place. And as much as I was, um, you know, adding water to it, I could tell it was definitely eating up. I tried to Dremel for a bit, but it was just a, it was just a mess. Uh, nothing really was working. So, I mean, I kept adding water uh, and I just kept trying. I mean, I knew that that also was shot. I mean, look how smoking hot it was getting. So it was just like, hey, let's just throw a little bit of water in there. But eventually, you know, what you thought could happen did happen. Oh, putain. I mean, that's just a simple lesson. When you don't have the right tool, that's what happens. So I just jumped on Amazon and got this, like, I don't know, $15 replacement. That was brand new. I'm not sure it's not great quality, but at least for, like, one use, I know it was going to be halfway decent. So I definitely was going a lot slower this time and always added a lot of water. And, yes, I mean, it worked so much better. I mean, a world of a difference. And yep, yeah, it got as good as it was gonna get. And luckily enough, it did fit on the first try. Perfect, exactly what I needed. And I mean, I was starting to feel great. I mean, look at that. I was done with the final wall of the shower. Uh, now was the time to actually move on to making the curb. Because you see, you actually have to do the curb first before you do the lowest level of the shower walls. That's very important and you'll see why. So for the curb, I decided I was gonna use pieces of my 12 by 24 inches style. 
in uh, pieces of uh, 12 inches long. And so what I started by doing was actually taking the height from the inside of the shower. Because keep in mind that your shower is not perfectly straight. It has a slope. So every piece inside is going to have a different starting point and a different ending point. So you need to capture that in the measurement and then try and cut it with this stupid wow. tile snapper that never seemed to work. Because a lot of the edges of the curb are actually going to be exposed, I use this uh, sanding stone to actually help in, you know, softening the angle, uh, you know, on all the pieces that I cut. So you see, that's all small. The pieces are going to be more or less, and I had to do a lot of them. So, of course, you know, it's kind of like the game of like dry fitting everything. I'm using a little one eighth inch spacer between the actual uh, shower floor and the tile, so that you know I will be able to uh, caulk that. And so you can see here, that's kind of what it looks like. Everything is just dry fitted at this point, but you want to make sure that, you know, it all fits correctly before you start and, you know, mix your thin set because you have only so much time to work. So you have to really plan accordingly, make sure everything fits before you start putting it in place. And I have found that actually putting the thin set to the back of the tile and doing the grooves is a lot easier for this curb than trying to like put synset everywhere and, and, and groove it, uh, you know, whatever is the term for that. Um, and yeah, still using all the, the spacers and the levelers. And here's the curb, uh, not fully done, but at least each side, I mean, you can really see the, the close up from the outside and the inside, so you really can get a, a feel for it. And then it was just a matter of finishing the top, which again was just gonna be pieces of tile. Uh, so you know, again, getting the right thickness and the right lens and everything fit nicely together. And no, we're not done quite yet. We still have the lower level of the shower walls to finish. Oh, goodness, I know it takes forever. So removing all those little ledgers and then really making sure to fill the pinholes that I made with the screws because that would have been otherwise a potential leak point. And then measuring everything, everything's going to be different because obviously, again, the shower floor is a slope, so everything has to be custom. Uh, you're definitely going to run into issues. Sometimes some grout from the floor was in the way, so I had to kind of scrape that a little bit. Also, I had to do a lot of adjustment to the tiles themselves. And if you remember, my walls were kind of like out of square, so I had to kind of work with it and, you know, kind of split the difference, uh, you know, in the middle because, you know, I was getting to the point where... I was pushing one side flush, then the other was sticking out, and that was my own mistake. It's because I don't know, the walls were not, you know, square the way they should have. But if you kind of, you know, thankfully I was able to split the difference, add more thin sets to the back of it, and hopefully no one will be able to tell the difference. So you remember when I told you that you have to wait and install the lowest row of tiles at the end? Well, you'll see why right now. Because I have to go over the curb, I have to actually cut the tile at like, I have to notch it. And so I, I found that using, um, you know, that jigsaw with a diamond blade was the best way to do it. Here you can clearly see it, that piece has to go over the curb, which is again why the curb absolutely needed to be done before I could finish the walls. Once the dry fit was good, I went back and applied everything with the synset. After that, the final step was probably the most satisfying one, especially after doing this whole shower and getting frustrated with so many steps. Knocking out all those little spacers was actually a lot of fun and I highly recommend it. So even though I had done my absolute best to make sure that the grout lines were gonna stay clear when I applied the synset, I still had several areas that were just not ready to be grouted and so I spent a lot of time just uh, cleaning those grout lines as good as possible. So it was finally time to grout the shower walls. Uh, the shower, I mean the grouting process is not that difficult it just takes a lot of time. You just have to kind of push your grout into your grout lines and you do that absolutely everywhere except actually at the corners because we will actually put uh, silicone there. But anyway, the grouting process is extremely tedious, especially the cleaning part of it where you keep using a sponge and, you know, remove the excess grout, clean your sponge and keep doing that over and over again until pretty much your, sp your sponge doesn't get gross again, which means that you actually have cleared all the grout. I did the exact same thing at the shower curb, very similar process, not that difficult. Uh, but then, yeah, that was the final result after the grout was dry. I mean, very happy how it turned out. I still needed to fill in the gap on the corners and at the bottom of the shower with actual silicone. 
because I think that's what you're supposed to use. Uh, and the best way to do that is actually to tape everything so that you don't like smear it all over the place and make a big mess. So you put, you know, your tape first, you can find silicone that actually matches the color of the ground. So you first apply it between two pieces of tape, you push it in with your fingers and then you remove the tape right away. And then you can wet your fingers and that really helps with getting like the cleanest result you can think of. And then you go kind of a final pass and that's it. That's how you really get a, a clean uh, finish. So I had to do exactly the same thing at the bottom of the shower, including over the curb. And you know, again, just take your time and uh, you know, it will work out. It's really not that difficult of a process. So as for the final step, I really wanted to seal the grout. That's just a way that to make sure the grout is not gonna get stained as easily. After that was time to actually uh, paint the ceiling. So I decided that I was just gonna paint it, uh, you know, typical white. I actually had some leftover ceiling paint, so I figured, hey, why not use that? I really only need just one small room. So I went ahead and just taped all the edges and painting it. I mean, again, that's just pretty straightforward. I think I ended up doing uh, two coats to really get a, you know, a nice coverage. After that, it was time to paint the walls. So again, more taping this time to protect the ceiling that was, uh, you know, freshly painted. Well, obviously I dried. Uh, the walls, I did some sort of like cream color again same just like you know two layers and yeah really looked uh, pretty nice and the final step was to use to add a little bit of silicone right at the top of uh, of the shower and that was it it was ready to go unfortunately i had just a little bit of issue where the tape was pulling some of the white ceiling paint even though it was fully dry. So I actually got the skinniest paint brush from my daughter painting kit to actually do a little bit of touch up on the ceiling. And I think that's it. It was good to go. The result was absolutely amazing. And when you think about it, it didn't really cost that much. It's mostly sand and cement mixed for the base and a bunch of floor and wall tiles, some sunset, some grout. The total to get this whole shower done was about 1450. I mean, which is pretty good. So let me know in the comment if you'd like a breakdown of this cost. I mean, I can definitely share that. So in the next episode, I will actually go back to the kitchen. I really need to finish that. So click on the link you see on your screen and that will take you to that episode where you'll see me work on the kitchen and trying to make some progress there. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you there.